What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the SPY, the NASDAQ, the QQQs and the futures and break down why tomorrow is going to be a very interesting day and why I do anticipate some downside to come. I'm also going to break down what happened with the PPI report as we are seeing inflation a lot higher than what we want it to be and we are at risk of seeing another wave of high inflation and the Fed becoming even more hawkish. This is having a negative effect on the market and it's going to likely continue into tomorrow. So we're going to break on what i do predict to happen why we could see a bit of a sell-off tomorrow and how this may affect the overall market but before i break anything down though before i get into any more details i do have to mention a couple of things before starting firstly i'm not a financial planner make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever and also if you guys can please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this it not only benefits me it benefits the entire community as a whole and the last things, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, whether it's $1 or $100, it's up to you. You're guaranteed 12 free stocks, each valued at up to $3,000. And the best part is any could be a free NEO share, a free Tesla share, a free AMC share, or a mix of all of them. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just 12 days. Make sure you check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So anyways, guys, today was very interesting. And I warned everyone, all right? I warned everyone, expect a crazy day tomorrow. And I, I, I'm sorry, I said that yesterday. Yesterday would be, you know, tomorrow would be today from yesterday. But anyways, I expected a crazy day today, all right? And what I told you was, I thought we might get a bit of a pop. We, we could get either a gap down or a gap up depending on PPI. I expected lots of volatility and the market makers to try to push the market up. Then I mentioned that there are going to be some Fed speakers, so we might see the market cool off a little bit. And I didn't expect us to actually, you know, come down this hard. But I did mention to you guys to just be ready because we had lots of Fed speakers coming near the end of the day. Now, I didn't actually tell you guys that I knew what would happen because nobody truly knew. But I did mention to you guys to be very careful because of what was about to come. So now let's start off with what actually happened. Okay, PPI came out. Guess what? The consensus was a 0.4% increase month over month for PPI. PPI is the producer price index. It's basically like CPI from the producer side. And it's a very important inflationary measure. All right. So this thing was supposed to be 0.4%. This inflation should have been 0.4% month over month to the upside. Instead, it was 0.7%, almost twice as high as what we wanted it to be. On top of that core PPI, which is PPI excluding uh, many different factors, this is actually, this was, I'm sorry, supposed to be 0.3% and ended up being 0.5%, right? It's almost twice as high as what we wanted it to be. Initial jobless claims came out. 194,000 jobless claims were reported. We want this thing to be over 200,000. So this is telling me the jobs market is too strong. There are way too many jobs being gained. There are not as many people as we want filing for unemployment. The jobs market is strong. Inflation is still high. It's likely going to continue to be high for a while as it tends to be sticky. So that's not good for the fed or everyday americans the fed are incentivized to be hawkish to drag the markets down to slow things down that is what the fed is incentivized to do and that is what they've been saying i also want to note that uh, we had year over year ppi come out we wanted this thing to be 5.4 percent. guess what it was six percent we wanted core ppi which is once again the core version of it to be 4.9%. It was actually 5.4%. Inflation is too high. It's much higher than what we expected it to be. It's too hot. The Fed are going to get aggressive. They're continuing to tighten. And we know what happened last year when they did this. The whole market is just rallying and rallying, acting like, oh, inflation's out of the way. We're doing so much better. No. That is not what's actually going on. Inflation is sticky. It's still hot. And as I mentioned to you guys on this channel, the Fed is continuing to tighten and tighten. They're going to likely continue to be hawkish. What, what can I tell you about the markets? I told you guys that I thought that we would close a little bit below max pain or around this max pain area. So like 
uh, somewhere very close to this because for last Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the markets closed around this area. We ended up coming lower than it, around 408. And 408 is barely holding us up right now. I want to note that max pain for tomorrow is 405. And we have a lot of puts out of the money now. Now that we got the Fed bullard coming out and dragging the markets down, this in turn, and I'm going to actually talk about some of the things he said and why the market dropped, but this in turn increases the odds of the bears coming in, the big bears, the institutions, you know, with their big put sweep orders to start dragging a lot of these puts from out the money to in the money. They don't want their puts out the money. They're going to try to drag the market down to make money. This is what I believe is going to happen tomorrow. We're likely going to see a bit of a sell-off and close around max pain, maybe, maybe even lower. All right. What, why do I say this? What actually happened? The market gapped down because PPI was bad. Inflation was high. We actually got a nice bounce. The market tried to fill the gap. And then if you were watching real life order flow, whoopsie daisies, you would have noticed that even though this was resembling a bullish triangle, even though it was a technically bullish structure, you could argue that this was not resembling like uh, a rising wedge. It looked more like a bullish triangle to me. Uh, I'm, I'm noting this because of the fact that, yes, things could turn in a tide. Things could turn in a second. And right here, in this area right here, there are lots of orders coming out, lots of massive put sweeps, lots of institutions started shorting. I was like, why are they doing this? Something's about to happen. The Fed speakers came. Bullard from the Fed came. And he ended up saying, oh, 50 basis points is on the table. We might raise the Fed funds rate by 50 basis points. Be prepared for that. He said it's a possibility. Anything is possible. Be prepared. Inflation is too hot. The Fed has to continue tightening. And then the market just went smack to the downside. That was not a good thing. We also had this initial sell off. We started selling off a bit after we had Tesla starting to tank. Tesla started tanking because of a share recall it announced and also because the Fed also helped drag it down. So there were a lot of things coming out to drag the market down. And we saw SPY close very close to 408. Now, if you were watching my previous videos, remember the zones I pointed out. Okay, if we were at 410, resistance was at this 412 to 413 area. If we broke above that, then we had this 416. I mentioned that to you. But if we came all the way back down, what's the next zone to watch for if we broke below 410 and we got a clean break below it? The next zone is 408, right? I, I mentioned these zones all the time so you guys have a good gauge of what to watch for. And if we break below 408, what comes next? 405. Watch 405 very carefully. Break that. There is some support at 402, but the much stronger support is going to be at 400. 400 to 402 is going to be very key as well. What do I predict for tomorrow? I'm anticipating a bit of a bounce into open. Okay. I, I mean, I think that we might drop a little bit, then see a nice bounce. We might see the you know, bulls still trying to buy and fight a bit. We might try to reclaim 410 or so, trade a little sideways, then start shopping between 408 and 410, then start coming all the way down to 405. We could even come a little lower than it, but overall, I do think we're going to close around this 405 area, maybe a little bit lower. I am anticipating a bit of a sell-off, and I want everyone to be prepared for that, all right? For Tesla, what's going on with Tesla? I mentioned to everyone, we have this 215 area. If it broke below that, 209 is the zone to watch. Look at what happened when this thing got into 209s, right? It bounces. Oh, it bounced uh, here. Hold on. It bounced here off 209, came up, bounced off 209, bounced off 209, came all the way up. It tested it for the fourth time and failed. If it failed, the next zone to watch is 205. Look what happened when we hit 205. We bounced off of it temporarily for a few minutes. Then we actually broke below it. Once we broke it, the zone to watch is around this uh, 200 area. We ended up actually holding about 202 and closing there. Once again, these zones do work. You have to watch them very carefully. And now for Tesla, what am I seeing? Tomorrow, Tesla is going to try to bounce, in my opinion. It's going to try to get back to this 205, maybe 209 area. Then I expect Tesla to start selling off again. 
and it's gonna fight for 198 to 200. If it does not hold 198 to 200, right? If it does not hold that area, specifically 200 is gonna be more significant. It's gonna come crashing down to about 193. If it fails there, there's 189. These could be retested because of the share, not the share, I'm sorry, the, the car recall. They had hundreds of thousands of their vehicles basically recalled because of the full self-driving technology. And on top of that, uh, there are other big factors that are going to be affecting it. When it comes to Meta, there is that gap below. There's actually a huge gap below. I think a lot of people I know are shorting Meta. Not telling you to do that, by the way, though. But there's this giant gap on Meta. It's been slowly coming down to fill the gap. I know I don't usually like trade it or even talk too much about it. Uh, I'm going to be watching some very key Fib levels on it. Let me just show you what they are. We could actually use this whole gap as the fib levels so i can actually take a fibonacci retracement start from right about here and then build our zones like this uh the next major level to watch and this is what we're trying to hold is the 0.5 retracement line if we break below that this thing could come all the way down to 166. watch 166 very careful on meta it could come down very soon amc she had a somewhat green day i do think she might pop a little bit more but overall i don't think this you know cup and handle like formation is going to hold i think amc has some downside to come watch five dollars i think that's where she's going to come very very soon finally for microsoft i mentioned to you guys it's going to likely fill its gap that's exactly what happened 262 has come Watch 260. If it fails right there, there's another gap all the way down here and the one, I'm sorry, the 250s. Finally, Apple. Now, I didn't expect Apple to come down like this. For Apple, I expected Apple to, I, I expected Apple to try to get a retest of 157, get a rejection, then it could potentially come down all the way down to about this 155 area. If it failed there, I'd be watching 152. If that fails, there's 150. I do believe it's going to come down to 150 very soon after the news. On the triple Q, our friend, the triple Q, it looks like it's heading for 300. If it fails there, watch 294 to 295. VIX, the VIX is getting another breakout on the daily time frame. It's back above the falling wedge. It's going to likely continue as volatility increases. The dollar is at 104. Like I said, similar structure. I expect it to maybe come down, get a bounce off the wedge and continue going. We actually bounced earlier. The dollar is still going. The market is likely going to see some blood very soon. So all the signs are pointing in that direction. There is some downside to come. I just want you to be prepared, especially because the 10-year yields are continuing to push to the upside. So with that said, thank you all for listening. Please watch the levels very carefully. And I'm warning everyone, um, watch both support and resistance levels. And also remember, it's in incredibly important that you also watch the very important resistances and supports. And also, I forgot, um, um, the very, very important levels. So anyways, thank you all for listening. I think I was just lost for words for a second. Make sure you're very careful. Make sure you're ready for a potential sell-off and be very, very cautious. Thank you. The market to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And peace out.